Hi, and welcome to Coach Jude at Rangi Toto. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about journaling and how this may really help you attain and maintain a healthy weight. Now, I don't blame you if you're a bit skeptical about the whole idea. I was too, until I actually tried it. How on earth will writing things down help me when I'm trying to stop overeating? The two seem totally unrelated. But here's the secret, folks. Understanding why you're overeating, that's the crux of the matter. And that's where journaling can really help you gain some fantastic insights. So let's delve a little deeper. So my own journaling experience started after I read Judith Beck's book, The Beck Diet Solution. This book consists of a 42-day program of activities designed to help you think like a thin person. And one of the things that it encourages you to do is to write things down. Now there is a growing body of evidence out there about the benefits of journaling, especially with regard to your mental health it reduces stress, anxiety, and depression. The website positivepsychology.com lists a massive 83 benefits. And whilst you may also enjoy some of these benefits, the focus of this episode is really about effective journaling to help you attain and maintain a healthy weight. And if you want some more practical ideas to help in your weight loss journey, perhaps you're just starting out or maybe you've stalled a bit, check out my free comprehensive guide to kickstarting your weight loss. I've included a link in the description below. Now let's look at five tips to journaling success. For tip one, the first thing I would encourage you to write in your journal is your goal or goals. What do you want to achieve? And be specific. I want to emphasize the word want here because when I've discussed this with clients, they dis typically describe what they think they can achieve. And there is often a gap between what they really want and what they think they can achieve. But here's the thing, people. We all underestimate ourselves. We are all far more capable than we ever give ourselves credit for. And what typically stops us is our own self-limiting beliefs. So be brave, be courageous, and write down what you want. If you don't, you will never achieve it. And here's the thing, just writing it down makes it much more likely that you will achieve it. Especially if you get really clear about why achieving that goal is so important to you. For my tip two, you need to think about and write down why you want that goal. And to be honest, this is where the real work is done. But because to gain clarity about your why takes thinking and reflection. It may not be immediately clear and if you're not clear about why something is important to you, then when faced with a choice, you'll be much more likely to choose instant gratification than choosing the option that will move you closer to your goal. Now, this is not easy. When I set off on my own journey, I didn't really have a lot of clarity about why it was important to me. I could list all the benefits I would gain by losing the weight, like being able to buy clothes from a normal shop, getting my blood pressure under control, being able to get out of the bath without needing a hoist, etc. But what I really didn't get clarity on until much later was that being morbidly obese was so life-limiting. There were so many things that I either couldn't do or was too embarrassed to do. My life was shrinking and my opportunities were much more limited than they needed to be. Because these changes happen slowly over time, I really wasn't aware of them. Now, thanks to my journaling, I have much more clarity over why I want to maintain a healthy weight. 
Essentially, I want to be thriving in my 90s. And for this, and for me, this means still being able to climb my beloved Lakeland Fells or going for a run in the beautiful countryside. But it's also about protecting my brain and ensuring that I don't suffer unnecessarily from cognitive decline, which also involves being socially active and minimising the amount of inflammation in my body. Now you might think, what has your weight got to do with being socially active and minimising inflammation? Well, excess fat causes inflammation, so the more you have, the more damage it will cause. And being slimmer and fitter, I have more energy and stamina than I did 10 years ago, which means that I can get involved in doing more, which means I meet more people. So how do you gain this clarity? Well, try asking yourself, what is important to me about my goal multiple times? It often helps to think about what you don't want as well. So using my example, what is important about thriving in my 90s? Well, it's important because I want to live a full and exciting life. And I don't want to be frail spending my time watching daytime television, waiting to die. What's important about living a full and exciting life? Well, it's more fun. It gives me a reason to get up in the morning. It's not boring. Why is it important to have fun and a reason to get up in the morning? Well, if I don't, is there any real reason for being alive? Do you get the idea? Obviously, your reasons will be very personal to you and you may need to mull over them for a day or two, two or even longer. But the more clarity you have, the more likely you are to succeed almost as important as understanding why achieving your goal is important to you is figuring out how you're actually going to do it. Having a plan is vital and writing it down again makes a really big difference to whether it is successful or not. Now this doesn't have to be a complex elaborate five page report. It typically can be just a couple of sentences. My own plan could be described as I will aim to lose two pounds a week by eating 1500 calories a day and burning two and a half thousand calories, thereby creating a thousand calorie deficit. To ensure that I only eat 1500 calories, I will plan all my meals in advance. For my burn, I will have hourly targets to achieve and actively explore lots of different ways to increase my burn. So my next tip, tip three, is each week set yourself a mini goal. Most weeks, my mini goal was to lose two pounds. However, if I was going away for the weekend or staying with friends, then I would modify this to be realistic. There's no point setting yourself up for failure. So some weeks my goal was to stay the same or even over an extended holiday period to gain no more than a few pounds. Here's the thing though, most weeks, whatever I set myself to achieve, I did. Now, I'm not exactly sure why this was true, but try it yourself. My theory is, is that if you set a goal and write it down, it subtly influences your decision making, even if you're not consciously aware of it. It's almost like the sub subconscious part of your brain gets on board and works with you rather than against you. Tip four is to reflect on what went well and perhaps what didn't go to plan. Take the time to congratulate yourself on the things that went well. We are often so busy moving on to the next thing on our to-do list that we, we forget to reflect on what we have learned and what we can use going forward. This is, the, this is often the time where you really get insights into what is driving your behaviour and whether your beliefs are actually true or not. For example, your plan might be that you're going to avoid eating after 7pm, where previously you would typically have a post-dinner snack. Beforehand, you might think this is going to be really difficult and is going to take lots of willpower. 
You could journal about how you could manage these uncomfortable feelings. After you've been doing it, say, for a week or so, you reflect on what you actually felt and how difficult it was. You might have found that if you were fully committed to the, to the decision, the whole thing was actually a breeze and didn't bother you at all. Or maybe during the week it was straightforward, but at the weekend it was challenging. If it was, ask yourself what was challenging about it. What beliefs do you have about the weekend that's different from a Tuesday night, for example? The idea is to really learn, develop your self-awareness so that you act based on your values and goals rather than how you think you might feel. And lastly, tip five. The one thing you should not use your journal for is to beat yourself up if things don't go well. Putting yourself down really won't help. If things don't go to plan or you made choices with hindsight that weren't the best, then acknowledge that. But remember, you are human. You are not a robot that will always respond to a situation in the same way. In fact, recognising this is where you can learn. So if things were easy on Monday, but really difficult on Tuesday, what was the difference? Did you not sleep well on Monday? Or maybe work was frustrating? Identifying the differences can help you build a strategy to deal with them in the future. And to paraphrase something Gillian Michaels often says, it's not the number of times you fall down that matters, we all fall down. The difference is whether you're willing to get up again. If you are, you will succeed, especially if you've taken the time to reflect on what you did, what worked and what didn't, and what you can use going forward. So in conclusion, using journaling to identify your goals, your why and your plans. Reflect on issues that may get in your way and develop strategies for dealing with them. Recognise what works well for you and make sure you build these processes into your future plans. If it all goes pear-shaped, pick yourself up, dust yourself down, reflect on what you can learn and do differently next time. There is always a way, you just have to keep trying. And remember, if you need more ideas because you're just setting out on your weight loss journey, or perhaps you've stalled, check out the link below to my free comprehensive guide to kickstarting your weight loss. And on that thought, as always, I will leave you. I thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to like this episode if you found it useful. Subscribe if you want to learn more and do share your progress, your triumphs and your insights with me. All the best, until next time, bye.